Hey everybody, welcome back to Active Self Protection Extra. Time for a little bit of dry fire with Neil. Let's go have some fun. Today's video was brought to us by Mantis. The Mantis family of products is integral to ASP staff building handgun and carbine skills and are your most economical and fastest path to improvement in your skills too. Whether you choose the X10, the Laser Academy, the Blackbeard, or use them all in concert, they will help your practice be more effective, efficient, and fun. Go check them out, pick up a unit, and thank them for sponsoring today's video. All right, so if you've been following along, you know we've been doing a lot of stuff with the Mantis. And while you don't have to have a Mantis to do uh, any of the things that we've done, I've kind of tried to show you how you can work through those things with it. The Mantis makes it a little bit more fun, a little bit more engaging, and adds uh, some accountability there. Uh, again, I don't have a problem if you don't have one. I'm not saying you have to go out and spend a bunch of money to get one of these. I'm just saying they're kind of fun. Uh, and it'll help you be a, a better shooter. This week, what I want to talk about is uh, continue the conversation that we started last week about being mentally present when we're in our dry fire. Uh, one of the challenges that I see as I talk to people a lot as we you know, go travel the country or just talk to people online uh, is they talk about their dry fire process and it's that, you know what, I sit in front of the TV and I, I may aim at the TV and use something there as targets or I may just sit there and pull the trigger. And, you know, I think that when it really comes down to it, if we're not mentally present when we're doing any kind of work to get better, we're not really getting better. You may see small increments of, of improvement, but you're not going to see anything that's really big or sustainable because you're not really learning anything. And so, you know, part of going to a class or part of going to the range or part of dry fire is to push yourself to failure so you can learn something and you can be a little bit better next time. And so as I work through my stuff, I'm, 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 I've got a little bit of a, I, I, I stab myself right here in the hand, which really rubs on the gun. Uh, we're getting ready to go do a class. So it's gonna be a lot of fun doing demos, uh, shooting on this thing where this rubs on the gun, but I'll figure it out, put a Band-Aid on it. And I'll, I'll rub some dirt on it, it'll be fine. Uh, and we'll still have a good time. But, uh, but one of the things that I'm really kind of trying to focus on and be present on is that my dry fire, um, has been less than uh, the amount that I'd like, right? I, I just haven't, we've been so busy, I just haven't been doing dry fire the way that I'd like. Don't get down here to the dojo as much as I'd like to. And I need to kind of, you know, sand off the rough edges and, and knock the rust off or whatever analogy you like. Uh, but that's kind of where I'm working on. But if I'm not mentally present as I do it, uh, I'm, I may give myself some bad habits and I probably won't see the increase that I'd like to see. Uh, in a class that John and I just took uh, last weekend with a whole bunch of cool people, a bunch of people that are in our dry fire group showed up and it was a lot of fun to hang out and shoot with old friends and meet, meet, uh, met a few new friends as well. Um, was that I, I felt like my draw was a little janky and just didn't really, didn't feel smooth and didn't feel right. And so th for the next few days, what I wanna work on is just cleaning that up and getting through the process. But as I was having a conversation, with one of the other students in the class this week that's I've known this guy for a couple of years and we're, we're pretty good friends and he was just sharing kind of the same thing that you know when I step up to do the do my draw I've got so much stuff running through my mind telling me all of the things that I've got to do uh, that I get hung up and 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 things just kind of go wonky and and this is this guy's a good shooter uh, he's a good friend of mine he's been to our national conference a couple of times I really think he's a great guy uh, and so we sat and talked about it for a little bit and I'm like you know I I kind of do that once in a while too. I'm like, okay, I got to clear the cover garment. I got to get my hand on the gun. I've got to come out. I've got to marry up perfectly. I've got to, I've got to get front side proud and all of that kind of stuff. And as I think through that portion of the process, when I get to those minute details, um, you know, sometimes I'm like, oh, I didn't get that right. And then I get stuck. If I didn't get my hand on just right there, I'm stuck in that the entire way rather than just letting it all be smooth and letting it happen. Uh, so what we talked about and what I typically do when I find myself getting stuck in the details like that is I focus on, uh, you know, my, my, my walk up song is what I call it. And, and so I've got some music that, that goes in my head, uh, that takes all the rest of that out of there. And it's changed over the years. And, uh, if you know me, I'm sure you know that they're all weird songs and dumb songs and, you know, I'm a redneck country kid. So, you know, of course there's a fish in the dark in there that, uh, and, and it's not about getting amped up and getting fired up. Uh, it's about 
clearing my mind and getting focused and something that can play in the background in my head and I can let the unconscious competence of all of the work that I've done over the years come out and play. Uh, I've still got to stay present and I've still got to focus on everything uh, so that I can catch any mistakes or catch any, you know, anything that tweaks or twerks the wrong direction. Uh, but you know, I, I've got something to kind of let all of the rest of that go uh, and give me a go signal and have some fun with it. And uh, so as we talked through that, I, I've, a light kind of came on in his head and he's going to go work on that. And I'm, I, we haven't even talked yet. We'll probably talk uh, over the next few days and hopefully that this worked out for him pretty well. But I kind of want to show you what I think of as I go through that, show you what I feel, at least Neil's version of uh, being mentally present is because everybody has their different versions of different things. You know, as I describe follow through uh, in shooting, uh, somebody else may say that's not at all what follow through is. And somebody else may say, well, neither of you are right. Uh, you know, I, I think there is some person, uh, there's some personal touches to some of that. And it depends a lot on the level of shooter you are and where you're at in your journey and all that kind of stuff. And I think we need to be open to stop fighting over all of the dumb stuff and just get to the basics, stay mentally present, have fun with it, and we'll get better probably quicker than than most. And so today I'm going to do a few of the uh, draw, the holster draw analysis here um, on the X10. Let me get the screen recording started using my tiny little dots here. And really uh, another thing that I'm focused on, I'm, I'm really working on is my vision and really trying to dial into the center of this tiny little target or this one or this one, depending on which one I pick, uh, but staring at the center, but then relaxing my vision enough that I see the outside of it as well. It is an amazing thing. If you ever get the chance to take Riley Bowman's class and, and go through the portion of that where he talks about vision and opening up our vision, um, I saw things from, uh, I think there were 14 shooters in there, uh, that I didn't, uh, every person got better going through that little that little portion uh, and it's it's a little bit nuanced and it's a little bit of a struggle and it's something that you I mean in a class where somebody's leading you it's a piece of cake uh, for most of us it was a piece of cake there were a couple that had some challenges with it but uh, but that's that's neither here nor there uh, putting it into practice in everyday shooting and everyday dry fire I found to be a little bit more of a challenge so I'm working on relaxing my vision and seeing things with my periphery as I go. And what we saw from a lot of those is people shot a whole lot better. So I'm just going to do some holster draw analysis and we're going to have a good time here. Let's see here. So. Stand by. <laughs> so not a horrible draw. Didn't see my Stand dot near by. fast enough though. Shot a little high. Got to get my left hand into it. 1.0. There we go. Saw the dot. Life was good. Stand by. 1.0. Okay. A little to the right. Stand by. 0.9. The dot came in as a streak Stand from up here, meaning I got to get my left hand done. There. <laughs> Maybe I was so fast it didn't even pick it up. That's what we're going to say. 1.0. There we go. All right. So. Stand by. So with the Mantis here, you can see that, and hopefully this is on your screen and working. I got some weird message. Uh, Okay, it's gone. Uh, hopefully it's on your screen and it's going to work. Being present while we shoot means that we focus on everything and try to soften our gaze at the same time, which is kind of difficult, like I said. Uh, but you heard me talk about one time it kind of streaked in from up here as I was as I was presenting, the dot came from up here and came down. That's what I meant. So really what I need to do is get this hand on quicker, get my left hand on quicker and get the grip that I want. And that's going to line it up straight. So hopefully it comes right in from 12 o'clock and just drops in for me every single time. Um, there was another time that it came in from over here. Uh, and what that was, I was just rushing it. So I was pushing this out rather than pulling out with this hand. So um, so that's what I mean about being mentally present as we go through all of this and we're in our dry fire. If you're sitting on your couch watching TV, there's nothing wrong with watching TV. I love me some 
Ted Lasso, man, that thing just started up again and I'm super excited to watch that. But I wanna engage in that and engage in my downtime and relax a little bit. And relaxing with a gun in my hand is something that I just find to be not a great idea just because I've heard too many horror stories. So go find your dry fire dojo, get it set up so that you can shoot safely. This is, I'm in a basement. If God forbid, if I do something stupid and one goes off, um, Steph's gonna be mad at me. Uh, there's gonna be a hole here uh, in the wall but there's concrete behind that and then dirt. And so I'm, I'm in a place where I have, uh, you know, this is the direction of least consequence for me. Uh, and I can get mentally present. You see that I, I dry fire uh, with my barrel block in. Uh, I've got my mantis on here. I don't always use the mantis, uh, but I try to use the barrel block as much as I can. If, if I'm at home, I use the barrel block. If I'm on the road, I don't travel with one of those. Probably should, wouldn't take much to throw one of those in. Um, but you know, it's a piece of cake. You unload the gun. Um, and see, I've got a little mag block in there as well. Um, when this thing is done, that's what it looks like. You just take that out and the thing pulls out. I load this gun up, I holster up safely and I go back to work um, as I normally would. So, um, <clears throat> Let me get that back in there. So folks, I'm just saying, get mentally present. Uh, whether you're working on your holster draw, whether you're working on your trigger press, whether you're working on your grip with your right hand, your left hand, your single, your, your, you know, your dominant hand, your whatever, it doesn't matter. Get mentally present, read your sights, learn how that all that works and learn what you have to do to get that perfect shot on. Then we can make that repeatable. Then we can go out and become a better shooter. And then you see the improvements. Uh, sitting on the couch watching TV doing that. Uh, one, it's a dangerous. Two, you may end up having to buy yourself a new TV because I know some people that have had to. Uh, and, and three, you just don't get better faster. So if you want to get better, put some time into it, have a good time with it. Uh, if you're happy with where you are, I get it. Some people just don't dry fire and that's completely fine as well. I highly recommend it, but I also get that life happens because uh, it happens for me too. And so I want to be a little bit easy going on that. Uh, just the fact that somebody doesn't dry fire doesn't mean they don't get to carry a gun. I don't think anything along those lines, but I think on your day, if you have to pull the gun, uh, I've never heard anybody say, well, I did too much dry fire and I was too good in that gunfight. It just doesn't happen. And so I want to be as good as I can if that ever happens. And I enjoy that. It's a fun time and it's something good that I do. Um, you know, and everybody has their priorities. You get to have yours. Um, but if you are going to dry fire, here's a good way to get better. So have a great one. See you next week.